These are two of the best-selling smartphones in the world, and they are also the dilemma that many of you are facing. Should I get the new Galaxy or the new iPhone? Well, let's find out which one is right for you. I'm Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this is iPhone 5S versus the Galaxy S4. This is one of the most difficult comparisons ever since these two devices have very little in common except for three things. They are both iterative updates of their predecessors, they are both very powerful devices, and they are also polarizing phones that are either loved or hated by everyone. Their hardware is a clear example of just how different these two phones are. Apple's iPhone 5S retains the same aluminum and glass design of last year's model, with the exception of some low-light enhancements to the camera, a new A764 bit processor that's yet to be proven, and there are new Touch ID fingerprint scanner that's state-of-the-art for the most part. By contrast, Samsung's Galaxy S4 retains the same plastic design of last year's model with some minor refinements on the curves, a much better camera, significantly better, and the adoption of the Snapdragon 600 processor in our AT&T unit here. I won't bore you with comparing specifications or benchmarks side by side because that wouldn't be fair, especially with the iPhone and X64 bit processor, but both devices perform great in daily and hardcore usage and really that's what matters. I think the whole discussion of AMOLED versus IPS or RGB versus Pental is over. Both devices have great displays with great color reproduction, great viewing angles, and awesome pixel density, though obviously the Galaxy S4 abides to a better 1080p standard. The question here is if you want big or not so big, and the other question you're left with is if you want plastic and hyperglaze or aluminum. Some people consider aluminum to be better build quality, but neither of these is scratch nor dent proof if you abuse them, so I like plastic as much as I like aluminum, it really depends on you. Now I'll tell you this much, Apple's choice of colors with the 5S deters fingerprints much better than Samsung's hyperglaze, if that's really an issue for you. The Galaxy S4 is more suited for those interested in a better multimedia experience with less compromises since the display is a full inch bigger than the iPhones, it has expandable storage up to 64 gigabytes and a replaceable battery, and yes, this phone is big by the standards of many. The iPhone, by contrast, is more suited for those wanting a simpler experience with great one-handed usage since this device is very easy to handle and it is small by most people's standards. And there is nothing expandable here as well, so there is one less thing to worry about for most people. Keep all these things in mind when choosing between these devices when it comes to hardware. Now, both of these devices were actually designed to disappear in your hand and are more focused on giving you a more comfortable software experience. Sadly, that is also a significantly different thing in both these devices. On the Galaxy S4, we have Android 4.2.2 covered by Samsung's proprietary version of TouchWiz, which is either loved or hated by many. I personally don't like TouchWiz because it seems more toy-like in my opinion, but I will hand it to Samsung for providing us a very reliable experience. There are minor stutters here and there, but you'll hardly ever be bothered by them. The biggest selling point of this phone is how many things you can do, even though you won't actually use half of the things you can actually do with it. Most of them are actually gimmicks. Samsung includes air gesture to hover through photos or pages, even though it's easier to do this with your thumb, and air view, which allows you to see messages without entering them, which is actually cool and comes from the Galaxy Note lineup. Aside from that, you get smart features like smart scroll and smart stay, which some are good, some are not usable at all. I personally turn them off. The only feature I do praise very highly is Samsung's multi-window support. Buying a big display is pointless if things are just bigger. You actually want to do more with that display, and Samsung actually allows you to multitask between different applications in a very smart way here. Apple's iOS 7 is a complete departure to TouchWiz. What Samsung gives you in abundance, Apple gives you in refinement. This new version of the OS is more grown up, more aesthetically pleasing, and even more feature packed than its predecessor, yet simple. It wasn't designed for you to show off hovering gestures to anyone, but instead to focus on doing what it can do quite well. 
Logical enhancements like Control Center or the Photo Gallery are much needed and actually quite cool, but there isn't really anything that the iPhone can do that the Galaxy can't do. The difference is that, for example, the keyboard on iOS is extremely reliable when it comes to text prediction and the Galaxy keyboard is just terrible. I had to install SwiftKey out of the box, but other than that, again, iOS is not about cramming features, but more about giving you the features that matter and making them work quite well. When it comes to software, it's really hard to recommend one more than the other. Both platforms have the healthiest ecosystems you can buy. And yeah, I won't bore you comparing Siri with S-Voice because it's just a waste of time more on the side of S-Voice. Still, you get Google now on both these phones, so there's really nothing to worry about in that end. In the end, if you want more and not necessarily better, Samsung is your best pick. And if you want more refined and not necessarily limited, then iOS is your best pick. The only worry I have with Samsung is that they've become really slow when it comes to updating their Android software, and then in the case of the iPhone, that's really never going to be a problem. Now what's it like to actually use these phones on a daily basis? In a word, it's actually great. Both devices are awesome performers in daily tasks and awesome performers in hardcore tasks. We tested them with games like Asphalt 8, and neither of them have heat problems or stutter problems when it comes to performance on these games or in their hardcore daily usage. I mean, I really have no complaints. And is Touch ID cool enough to pick the 5S over the GS4? Well, that actually depends on you. I've come to love the feature because I am a password type of person. The 5S rarely gets it wrong, and it works in seconds. Sadly, the Galaxy S4 does not have a fingerprint scanner, but then again, if you're not a password type of person, then you won't have to miss this. And again, if you like pens, you will be covered. Battery life on both these devices is quite similar. They'll get you through the day, and that's pretty much it. The only great thing about the Galaxy S4 is you get a replaceable power pack as long as you buy one. Now their cameras are a topic of unfair comparison. I say unfair because obviously the 5S is 6 months newer than the Galaxy S4. In daylight, these are two of my favorite camera phones. Great color reproduction, great level of detail, and just amazing photos overall. Now, when it comes to low-light photography, the iPhone 5S just destroys the Galaxy S4. Even without optical limit stabilization, the larger pixels do mean cleaner and usable photos with the 5S, whereas in the Galaxy S4, the photos in low-light are just unusable. And when it comes to flash, well, not everybody likes flash photos. I personally don't like them, but both phones perform quite similar. In call quality, again, I found the 5S to sound significantly better, and callers felt the same. This, you know, just follows my complaint with Galaxy phones. Till this date, I have not found a Galaxy phone that has good call quality, and the same case happens with the Galaxy S4. Now, both devices have awesome speakers. Their speakers sound louder than normal, and I do recommend them for speaker phone calls and even, yeah, listening to music. But then again, for phone calls, the iPhone 5S has the edge. So, bottom line, iPhone 5S or Galaxy S4? Well, I'll tell you this much, you won't go wrong with either. Both are great performers, though the iPhone 5S does push the bar with their camera technology and Touch ID. Still, the Galaxy S4 is no slouch when it comes to the added software features, and I'm sure most of you will like these things. If you're out there for a better multimedia experience, a bevy of software added features and little to no compromise when it comes to hardware, the Galaxy S4 is definitely your best pick. But if you're out there for a more refined and focused experience with a future-proof camera, enhanced security, and probably better build quality in the opinion of some, the iPhone 5S is definitely your pick as well. That's it for our comparison of the Galaxy S4 and the iPhone 5S. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave us a comment and tell us which device that you pick. Or if you have any questions still, leave us a comment down below as well. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter at Jaime underscore Rivera. You can also please as well give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.